Now, as the controversy over the partial sale of state-owned assets shows little sign of easing, the government's looking to sweeten the decision by talking up a loyalty scheme for Kiwis who buy shares in the energy companies that are up for sale. So what are the benefits of selling off our assets? Here to discuss is uh, New Zealand Initiative Executive Director Oliver Hartwich. Hi Oliver, thanks for coming in. Good morning. I know you think that uh, we should sell. Is this the right time, you think, to sell in this economic environment? Well, there is never a perfect time to sell assets because markets could always improve, and certainly that's true at the moment. However, sooner or later, I think these assets should be sold, and you have to pick a moment. You simply don't know where the global economy is going and whether the uh, general economic climate is going to improve or deteriorate. I think at some stage the government has to make a decision on whether to sell assets, and I think they've made a decision now, and I think it is justified. The government, uh, though, Oliver, isn't going to use the money from the asset sales to uh, retire debt. This has been quite an issue. It's, it's using that money, if you like, to maintain and build hospitals and schools and the like. And at the same time, once the assets are sold, the government loses a pretty good revenue stream. So can you understand perhaps why the country doesn't see that there's a great deal of economic sense in this? I don't actually quite buy the argument that the government doesn't retire debt because uh, what's the alternative if these assets were not sold? You would have to go deeper into debt to pay for the assets that the government actually wants to buy now with the proceeds from the sale of the assets. So I think altogether there is no ring fencing of government money in, uh, in the end because it all goes into the same budget. So without the asset sales we would definitely go further into debt. Do you believe, uh, Oliver, that there will be uh, a lot of foreign interest in these assets? There might well be foreign interest and actually we should welcome that because foreign investment is a good thing. We are dependent on international capital markets, we are a small economy, we are integrated into the world economy and we should really welcome foreign investment because that is really where our capital comes from. We are dependent on international capital flows and I would actually welcome any foreign investor showing an interest in these companies. I don't quite understand the populist sentiment against that. I think it's just a general concern that we lose uh, not necessarily control because the government also you know, maintains a 51% Chair, but there's just a general fear about you know uh, other countries, if you like, running or, or owning our assets. But as you said, it's a fear, but it's an irrational fear because you just have to look around the world and you would see that a lot of countries around the world operate in environments where the major electricity companies are foreign owned. Just look at European uh, countries, for example, where that's actually the, the case that in Germany, for example, you've got Swedish companies operating and that is not a loss to German consumers. So I think we should be seeing a, a similar model here as well. OK, if we look to uh, Europe for a moment and look to Greece, they have been told you know, they have to sell assets valued at around 5 billion euro. So is selling assets, if you like, something of a, a dance of the desperates? Is it the final solution? In an ideal world, would we be doing this? Well, actually, I think in the Greek case it was even more. It was about 50 billion euros that the Greeks were supposed to sell. Unfortunately, they haven't done it yet, uh, much to the annoyance of the Germans, at least in the, Germ in the European crisis. But <laughs> no, I think it is not uh, just a general theme around the world. It's something that really makes sense because we know that private companies, when they are uh, subject to the discipline of the markets, are usually better at using resources, much better than the government. And so I think from an economic point of view, it simply makes sense. OK, does the government have to get back to surplus, do you think, Oliver? The Reserve Bank says it's not going to happen. So what's the rush? Isn't it enough that we're tracking back towards black? Of course the government has to get back to surplus rather sooner than later and I think the, the uh, program that the government has put in place is probably able to achieve that by 2015-2016. The only problem is actually the long-term future, the long-term fiscal future of this country because we know that the return to surplus may be very short-lived once the pension liabilities, superannuation liabilities kick in later. So I think every um, effort should be welcomed now to get the government back to surplus rather sooner than later because our long-term problems are maybe even more severe. And do you favour austerity to do that or do you believe the government, government needs to spend to stimulate growth? No, I think what we should actually do is we should really question what the government should be doing. Uh, should it actually run electricity companies? My answer is no. And apart from that we should really try to find efficiencies within the system. That means pro probably reforming welfare further. OK, Oliver Hartwich uh, from the New Zealand Institute. Very much appreciate your, uh, sorry, the New Zealand Initiative. Appreciate your time, your analysis this morning on the, uh, the pro-asset sales debate.